Okay, so let us look at uh, Graves' disease uh, as one of the endocrine disorders um, that we have been looking at. So Graves' disease um, is one of the important diseases, especially when we're talking about hyperthyroidism. So Graves' disease is basically an autoimmune disorder. And the ultimate event is that we end up producing antibodies that um, uh, mimic the action of um, TSH, uh, then overstimulating the thyroid gland to produce a lot of thyroid hormones. So that ultimately leads to um, hyperthyroidism. So basically, this disease was first described by an Irish physician, Dr. James Graves, um, around 1835. And it, it, it takes up different kind of names, like uh, Bacetto's uh, disease, or it might also be referred to as toxic uh, diffuse goiter. So when we'll be looking at goiter, we'll, we'll look at different types, and you'll see that um, toxic diffuse goiter is one of the types, and this is basically another name of Graves' disease. So we know in the normal physiology that... Um, uh, TSH, which is um, thyroid uh, stimulating hormone, is just produced from the anterior pituitary, and then it it goes to the thyroid gland and um, stimulates the thyroid gland to produce the thyroid hormone. So we have T3, T4, and even calcitonin being produced. So um, when the T3 and T4 is released into the blood, obviously they go to the um, target cells. But when the amount of T3 and T4 is much more than needed in the blood, a negative feedback mechanism is actually sent to tell the thyroid gland to stop producing uh, more T3 and T4. And also another information is sent to the pituitary to uh, reduce production of TSH. So the negative feedback mechanism is quite important in uh, the regulation of the amount of T3 and T4 that we have in blood. So um, Graves' disease comes in when that um, mechanism is tampered with. So what happens, as I said earlier, is that uh, Graves' disease being an autoimmune disorder uh, basically leads to production of some antibodies. Yeah? So this antibody specifically uh, is the thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin, TSI, some, um, in some quarters just called the um, thyroid stimulating um immunoglobulins okay so this basically this um, specific antibody what it does is that it still goes to the thyroid and attaches them and it mimics the action of tsh basically it does pretty much what tsh does so basically stimulating the thyroid uh, gland to produce or secrete more t3 t4 uh, however, the only downside, the only thing that it doesn't mimic is the response uh, towards uh, the negative feedback mechanism. So even when we have produced enough T3 and T4 um, and, and a negative feedback mechanism is sent to tell um, TSH to stop stimulating um, the thyroid gland, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't respond to that. So what happens is that we keep on producing more and more and more thyroid, horm um, thyroid hormones and we end up having a buildup of T3, T4 and we have a case of hyperthyroidism. So it's quite a, a, um, a straightforward kind of um, way and the main issue is uh, we are producing the immunoglobulins, the immunoglobulins mimic TSH so they stimulate the thyroid gland the same way. The only thing is that they do not respond to the negative feedback mechanism. Therefore, we keep having more and more thyroid hormones being produced, and ultimately we have hypothyroidism kicking in. So in terms of spread and epidemiology, basically, um, um, grave disease basically can happen at any age. However, uh, it's most common um, between 20 to 40 years. And uh, even as you can see this graph, and these are age groups down here, and the rate per 100,000 persons per year, we can see from the peaking is uh, between this age here. For men, it's quite low, but for women, as you can see, the peaking is around from 20 years, okay? And then we have fewer cases, maybe from uh, 50 or, or 40 years or so. Another thing we can pick up from this graph is that actually women are much more, much more affected with this condition other than men. 
okay so men are not uh, seriously affected by um as much as not seriously they, they're not just not affected as much as women okay so that is one thing we need to know about uh, growth disease so the uh, risk factor so we already know the cause so we know the cause that has been majorly linked to growth disease is the antibody production because it's autoimmune so the risk factor is that if people have um, some family history of this disease so chances are that it will be passed on we have already seen that women are at higher risk much more than men and um, when we are at a certain age of um 20 to 40 years so basically before the age of 40 that, that's where the the risk uh, factor is quite high so also um presence of other autoimmune condition might also trigger uh, this problem so if you have other autoimmune uh, diseases such as um, vitiligo sle or rheumatoid arthritis this might also trigger uh, graves disease so in terms of the clinical features we accept we, we, we ex expect to occur basically it's obviously around hype hyperthyroidism okay so um we expect the features that will occur as, as a result of high levels of the thyroid hormone so ideally we know the thyroid hormones uh, basically are important for metabolism so we will have an overdrive of metabolism occurring and that will be the main issue so irritability nervousness um muscle weakness heat intolerance trouble uh, sleeping having tremors weight loss okay uh, frequent bowel movements so we have diarrhea irregular heartbeats and all that so all these things will occur as a result of hyperthyroidism as a result of a uh, grave disease uh, leading to high levels of thyroid hormones now, but now there are some classical features that we need to also uh, go through like um some people not all not all people but some people um, who have grave disease normally experience what we call a pretibial um, myxedema so just just on the anterior part of the tibia uh, we end up having some skin changes that look like the edematous or uh, such kind of changes that we see in the skin okay so this is um, pretibial myxedema or sometimes referred to as graves the uh, dermopathy now but this one is not it's not necessary for every person okay so some people this is a small number of people and um, experience this um pretibial myxedema another very classical feature again is what we call a uh, graves of thermopathy uh, basically a condition that occurs um around the eye so the immune system attacks muscles of the and, and tissues of around the eye so this kind of attack leads to inflammation uh, of those tissues and, and build up of uh, fat behind the eye socket now that build up pushes the eyeball and it, it looks like it is bulging out so it's also called exothalmus and you can see um uh, like in this image okay so of a person who has a uh, graves of thermopathy so other symptoms that might be there it's not only the bulging out and um, the puffiness the puffiness of the eyelids um double vision light sensitivity uh, the eye might seem uh, dry because of all this exposure now we have so dry gritty and ir uh, some irritated eyes uh, trouble moving the eye and also pressure or pain in the eyes so, so including light sensitivity so it is not only bulging but you might have other problems uh, with the eye so in terms of tests so um the mainstay tests are mostly blood tests and radioactive um, iodine uptake tests so this one is very important we expect because now we have um, um the production of t3 and t4 being taken to overdrive because of the unregulated uh, the negative mechanism is not working or is not responsive to the tsi uh, we will have a lot of uptake of iodine remember iodine is necessary for formation of t3 t4 therefore when this test is done there will be a very high uptake and this is indicative of um, graves disease also blood tests will show um t3 and t4 levels being high also tsh test and also tsi test or the tsh antibody uh, test so these ones will uh, be able to show us the levels um, that are indicative of graves imaging um especially like um, we might have 
different kinds of imaging. So the imaging, we can, for example, have the thyroid scan or ultrasound of the thyroid. The CT scan or MRI can also be done even on the eye, uh, just to visualize, to visualize how the eyeballs are almost bulging out. So uh, these are some of the diagnostic tests that have been done. So just to, as we come to um, uh, winding down all this, um, the main management is basically to try and um, reduce this effect. So we might have radioactive iodine. So this is some iodine that is um, given, and but it is not just the normal iodine. It, it has some radioactive component that is able to kill some of the cells in the thyroid gland uh, as a result, reducing the, the amount of um, uh, thyroid hormones we might end up producing. Apart from that, some medications, like some anti-thyroid medication, um, a common example is propyl thiouracil, PTU, and also methamazole. So these ones are um, antagonistic or they interfere with uh, the thyroid hormone production. So yes, we are having more stimulation, but we are interfering with the production, which is very important. Also, some other drugs like beta blockers. So these ones, so they do not affect the production of thyroid hormone. However, they reduce some of the symptoms, especially like... Um, heart rate, heartbeat, nervousness. So such kind of things are reduced by giving uh, beta blockers. So examples, propanolol, atenolol. So those are examples of beta blockers that will really work. Surgery is also done. And normally as a last resort, just um, an example is thyroidectomy, where um, basically a section of the thyroid is uh, resected and removed. And this this uh, is anticipated to reduce the amount of uh, T3 and T4 we end up having. I remember we had um, um, exophthalmos or the effect on the eyes. So um, for those who have that kind of problem, uh, eye care is also important, including things like giving eye drops. Remember we said dry eyes are common features and also special lenses. Remember we say things like We'll have eye irritability, uh, light sensitivity, and all those things affecting vision. So it's important that IK is also done. Okay. So uh, thank you so much. I hope that has been um, informative about Graves' disease. Goodbye.